In this section of the program, we shall look at how to determine the function of components from the symbolic information drawn within them. We begin with a pump symbol. Pump symbols may contain one or two energy triangles. When there is only one triangle, we interpret this to mean that the pump will operate only in one direction. Two energy triangles indicate that the pump is designed to operate in both directions. When a pump is driven with an electric motor, that detail may also be included in the circuit diagram. The motor symbol, when used, is connected as shown to the pump symbol. We move on to the representation of basic valves. The standard symbol for a valve is a square box known as an envelope. Drawn within and around the envelope will be the symbolic features of the valve. If we consider our pressure relief valve, it will be represented like this. Let's look at each feature in turn. The arrow within the envelope indicates the direction of oil flow during operation. The dashed line indicates that the valve is operated by pressure from the working line. The spring symbol tells us that the valve is held closed with spring tension. The arrow drawn through the spring indicates that the spring tension is adjustable. Let us now look at the directional control valve. Before we go into detail, let us first give it a full description that goes like this. It is a three-position, four-way, spring-centered, manually operated, tandem-center, proportional spool valve. Now, this is quite a name to give anything, and it's not likely that you will remember it. However, all those descriptive features can be shown in symbolic form. The three envelopes indicate that the valve has three possible spool positions. Each envelope depicts the oil flow through the valve in that particular position. The valve has four ports, or connections, that feed oil in the working lines to or from the valve. Ports are designated as P for pressure, T for tank. Connections to the actuator are designated A and B. Now we can associate the oil flow with the direction. In the extend position, oil flow will be in from the pump via port P and out to the actuator through port B. Return flow will be into the valve through port A and out to the tank via port T. In the retract position, flow is switched to direct the input between port P and port A. The return flow enters via port B and exits through port T. In the center, or neutral position, oil flow from the pump is routed directly back to the tank. Both the A and the B ports are blocked. In this position, the pump's delivery is diverted back to the tank, or, if required, could be tandemed to another control valve. Two other features are that A, the valve is manually operated with a control lever, and B, the lever returns automatically to the center position by spring action. This symbol depicts a manual lever. A spring symbol at each end of the spool indicates that the spool is spring-centered. The center position is the normal position for this valve. It must be understood that there are many different valve types and configurations. In fact, far too many to describe in this program. For your convenience and reference, you will find a handy chart giving illustrations of many symbols used in hydraulic circuits in your workbook. In this program, or module, you have been introduced to the principles of dealing with faults. You have also learned how to interpret a basic circuit diagram. You will learn many other aspects concerning hydraulic circuits and devices as you progress in your training. At this time, however, it is expected that you will be able to perform the very important basic maintenance tasks that are common to most systems. 
and you will be expected to go about locating common problems intelligently. We look forward to having you participate in other Tech AV modules designed to help you improve your knowledge and skills in technical aspects.